again, we're talking about intracranial dynamics, intracranial pressure. And what we know is that, that traumatic intracerebral hemorrhages or spontaneous intracerebral hemorrhages that take up space, all right? And there have been two trials that have been done in England from very good groups, multi-centered trials published in Lancet. And there's a STITCH trial, and there's a um, STITCH trial, which is the ice, which is the, uh, the traumatic trial. So there's both a non-traumatic and a traumatic trial. And what has been found is that removal of those clots or any type of surgery for that did not improve the outcome. All right. So that doesn't make sense, many of us said. And some of the caveats where this was done, oh, over 10 years ago. Okay, this study came out in the 2005, 2006, you know, that range. And that was before the routine use of navigation. Also, that was before the routine use of uh, minimally invasive procedures. And what I'm going to talk a little bit about here is the use of minimally invasive procedures to remove a clot. What does this accomplish? This is one of the most frustrating things we see in intracerebral hemorrhage, whether it be spontaneous or traumatic, either. Okay. They're common. They happen down deep in the basal ganglia, all right? And we see it that this will progress to this very commonly, all right? You sit there, you watch the patient, you observe them, try to control their blood pressure, all right? And there have been several studies that show that if you can control the blood pressure, you can try to mitigate that. However, we all know that that's easier said than done, and this will frequently happen, all right? Once you reach this stage, it oftentimes is devastating and there's not much you can do because the basal ganglia down here is right by the brainstem and gets um, severely injured, all right? So a new trial or a new initiative has been going on to try to remove these using minimally invasive techniques, okay? And this is a minimally invasive technique that is being used called one of the brain path technique. We put this cannula, the brain path cannula down into the brain and evacuate the clot. And you're working through a tube, so you're protecting the surrounding brain. You're using this targeted uh, approach. And what I point out is that you're taking perhaps a longer approach rather than a direct approach. This is the most direct approach here, but you're going through elephant cortex. If you go through this way here, it is a longer approach, but it is more, um, uh, it spares more of the uh, around the tissue and you decrease the collateral damage. So this can be done very effectively and you end up with nice results like this, okay? So what does that accomplish? You get the blood blood out of there, decrease the local mass effect, decrease the risk of it bleeding, and then you help the patient to recover because they don't have to absorb all that uh, breakdown uh, iron products, okay? Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.